Hello and welcome to episode 88 of Vokta Gaming. I'm your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain. And we are back this week with game 2 from the MLG series between these two players. We are on the map dual site and first up we have our red coloured Zerg. He is E.G. Idra. And spawning in the east we have our blue Protoss. He is OGS's MC. So, uh, for those of you who don't recall last week, and boy does that feel forever away, like I know it's only been like four days, well three days off, but still, Friday feels like forever away. MC took the first game very, very convincingly against Idra. This is a replay from Major League Gaming, the very last one, uh, the replays I have been sent. It is pretty fun. We've had, we already saw that excellent series between Leonok and Boxer, and of course now we are seeing this excellent series between MC and Idra. Idra, of course, one of the more controversial players in the game, although I think part of that is down to his early reputation now kind of dominating his career. I really don't think he's as bad as, um, as many people make him out to be uh, in terms of temper and in terms of how he plays. However, I think because of his reputation, people remember this kind of thing more, and that's that can really affect um, how you are perceived. And as we see, Idra doing his trademark style of getting the pool on 14 instead of going hatch first. Still not a fan, and I don't think I ever will be. I can understand doing it. It is a safer opening. But when you see so many Korean Zergs now going hatch first and holding it, time and time again, even after two racks pressure. I just don't see any reason not to do it if you don't have some really specific Zergling based strategy where you need them out as fast as possible. MC here, expanding, dropping the Nexus down very, very early. Which he knows he can do because he's been in here, he's seen the gas. So he knows that uh, Zerglings and Zergling speed is what is coming up first getting a forge as well, that's going to help wall this off, that's pretty much what you do. I like that from MC though, a lot of players go forge first and then expand. He drops that nexus before the forge, trusting in his ability to get everything set up and just picture perfect timing. Now we have the first of the zerglings out, they're going to clear this probe out and away from here. MC running the probe slightly, always good to do, and even dropping a pylon. Because what that does, it delays the Zerglings from getting to the front of this base until he can get that cannon up. And I really like that. That is just some very, very nice timing there. Good cannon position as well. That's going to defend this area and all the probes up here as well. Forces the Zerglings to run not just around here, but right the way around the outside. And even blocking that off with the cyber course. They are going to be forced through this tiny gap here and here and there. So these Zerglings are not going to do a great deal. These cannons are finishing now and the Zerglings are not even going to get in to get a scout. We have the expansion hatchery going up for Idra now. Zergling speed is about to finish along with a Baneling nest so it looks like he's going to try and bust down uh, the forge and maybe uh, the cannons interesting strategy if he does go for the bust. Uh, I must quickly uh, just apologise by the way as he morphs some bailings. If I yawn or whatever, I'm working nights uh, lately at work doing 10pm until 7am and holy crap never ever agree to do that because it is the worst thing ever. I am so so tired but of course that is not going to stop me from recording these videos because damn this is the most fun I have outside of my wife. So we have quite a few Bailings morphing now. We have links to follow up. We have five Bailings coming in here. We are going to watch them as they come in. The first century is not quite finished yet. So that could be a problem. Here come the Bailings. One goes down. But the rest get the cannons. And oh, MC losing a lot of probes right there. More probes coming out to defend along with the Stalkers now. But he lost a lot there. Unfortunately, Idra is just focusing down this cannon which is he did not get as many probe kills as perhaps he could have there but uh, it was still very very effective this attack does now get shut down but as we see 10 workers killed to none of his own 
did lose 15 units there, but they're only Zerglings, so they do not count for anything. That was absolutely fantastic move there. Oh, sorry, these are the worst yawns in the world. It does lose that overlord, which does send him back slightly. He's going to have to wait until these two finish, but that's no, not very long. He does have a queen on the way. And we have Stargate play coming now from MC. Where are you hiding your sneaky Stargate? There it is. Stargate up in the main base. Idra expanding again. Oh, but this could be bad. Now, I like the expansion. He knows he's done economic damage. He knows MC can't move out. But with a Stargate on the way, it can be very hard to defend three bases so far away from each other. If we just look at the actual distance involved, you've got to cover up here, across to here, and all the way up that ramp as well. So without Spore Crawlers, that is really tough to do, and there's no Evolution Chamber, so there will be no Spore Crawlers. In fact, getting a Roach Warren, which is the worst thing right now with Void Rays on the way because Roaches do zero damage to Void Rays because they cannot shoot upwards. Okay, we have an Evolution Chamber on the way finally, so perhaps, just perhaps, he will get out Spore Crawlers in time to stop this. Meanwhile, Protoss Ground Weapons Level 1 is on the way. Luckily for Idra, it is not a double gate. MC could not afford that because of the economic damage, even if he'd wanted to. Losing a Zealot there is getting a Robo Facility as well. Uh, potentially just Immortals for defence against the Roaches. I'd like to see that from him. We have even more of a wall off going down now. I'm trying to see if there's a way out for him through this gap. I'm not too sure that there is right now. So we have a few more Lings headed there. We have the first Void Ray nearly finished. Uh, sorry, we have the first Void Ray finished and the second Void Ray nearly done. The question is, will he move out with two, adding three gateways now? Zerglings here trying to push in. They see the Robo facility, they see it's working, but it's only an observer. So right now that is not what's important. Right now what is important is protecting this base. Now the Evolution Chamber is out, but so far we have no Spore Crawlers there, none here, and none here either, because he does not know that Void Rays are on the way. Here they come, moving out with two, two Void Rays and a Scantipede there. Scantipede not going to be much use in the battle, uh, because they don't fight, they are a neutral unit. Spore Crawlers trying to go down now, this could be very good defence here from Idra. Phoenix is out as well though, and that is Picker. I did not even notice that Phoenix, you sneaky Phoenix. And it is lifting up that Queen. Uh, he kills one Spore Crawler and kills a Queen, but that is not enough damage at all. And one of these Void Rays is nearly dead. Idra holding this very, very well. I must say. And now we have a Warp Prism coming out as well. Not really sure how this game's going to go yet. Things feel kind of very finely balanced now. Of course, these Void Rays could still do a lot of damage. Uh, and will be useful in any kind of ground engagement. But meanwhile, we have Idra upgrading Zerg missile attacks and Glial reconstitution. So those roaches are going to be very, very tough. Uh, which is why he needs to keep these Void Rays alive to help out against them. We have more Phoenixes joining in now. And in fact, this could be really good. Because, of course, he can use those to lift the Queens. But unfortunately, can't use it to escape the Spore Crawlers. Warp Prism is on the way now full of sentries. So will he go for the sentry block, dropping sentries in the main and using them to just block the ramp and stop any reinforcements from getting up here, which would allow him to kill almost everything here. No spore crawlers in fact. Just the one right in the edge and that could be bad. Because here he goes, force fielding the ramp there and warping more units in. Phoenix is now on Void Race doing a ton of damage. If he can kill these queens he can essentially take down this entire army. This is so good for Idra right now. Uh, sorry, for MC. Idra is in trouble. Idra is in a ton of trouble. And now the last queen there goes down. All he has are roaches, which is not going to be enough to stop Void Rays. Drones being pulled now, but drones are going to die so quickly. We watch the worker count go up. 11 killed for Idra, but it's now at 13. 14, 15 for MC. Oh, it's just going higher and higher. 20 workers killed so far for MC. 22. This is a huge attack. Incredibly, incredibly well timed. 
Idra now is just pushing out with roaches, but it's not going to be enough. There is just no way he is going to break through what is here right now. There's immortals, there's cannons. I certainly can hold off. We have Phoenix is going back to help. And this, I'm afraid, is game over for Idra. He's going to be out of MLG. And there's the GG. He sees that he's not getting through. Oh, Idra. Ah. Oh. What a brilliant attack at the start, and then just caught out by the Void Ray sentry drop. How good, by the way, is that Warp Prism sentry drop? I've just incredible, incredible stuff. Well, that is everything for today. I will, of course, be back tomorrow with yet more MLG. We have a completely new game tomorrow. I'm thinking I'm going to be covering Naniwa from MLG. That should be really fun. Don't forget to come check us out at scforum.eu where you can talk about StarCraft. Balance. Please don't talk about balance. God, I'm sick of reading balance discussions. Um, if you come there and talk about balance, I'm just going to say, I'm going to make this noise. <sighs> uh, but of course, you can also talk about other stuff. And you can also, very, very shortly, join me in Star Wars The Old Republic, because yes, I am getting into that early access very, very soon. So if any of you are on Europe servers, give me a shout, either in the comments or at voctagaming at gmail.com because I need a guild. I don't want to play it by myself. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow.